Hey guys, this is Jeff from Tech Review, and today we are going to be taking a look at Mac OS High Sierra running on a MacBook Pro 15 inch model. We'll go over some reasons why Apple probably downplayed this release, and also why I'm thoroughly disappointed in this beta so far. <laughs> First, before we get into it, I'd just like to say that this is obviously a small channel. Any support that you guys can give by subscribing to our channel and sharing our videos would be absolutely fantastic. We really do appreciate all of our subscribers and really want to grow as a channel and as a community, but that can only be done through you guys. So please help us out in any way that you can. Anyways, back to tech. Now, I ran a live stream on my channel of the WWDC live event and I along with several people who are watching did not really react well to macOS High Sierra. The APFS file system, some updates to the Photos app, eGPU support, and Siri update really didn't scream wow. By standards set by Apple in the past with macOS updates, this was honestly not impressive at all. But nevertheless, I kept a positive attitude as there could always be features added in later beta versions. So before we get into anything, we'll get the speeds from Geekbench and compare them to Mac OS Sierra. While that's running, I just want to talk about Mac OS and the MacBook Pros right now. A lot of you who bought a MacBook Pro late last year might feel a little bit cheated out of getting the best MacBook from Apple. If you bought a 2016 model, with the touch bar, your machine has actually been discontinued. Something that Apple has never done in a six month period ever. So when you look at the new MacBook Pros, they're actually a lot better suited for all of the new features in macOS High Sierra. And by that, I mean that macOS High Sierra will harness all of the power in those new MacBooks. So that will be sort of the future of macOS High Sierra. If you are a macOS Sierra user with an older laptop or desktop, getting much of a difference that you would actually be able to experience is just not gonna happen with this update. So that was my small rant on macOS High Sierra, but bottom line, this OS update was purely meant to have macOS Sierra access more power out of the new Mac lineup with updated Intel CPUs and AMD GPUs released this June. So here we can see that the CPU and GPU scores have actually gotten higher. Not by much, but just a little bit higher. But Geekbench tests don't really put your CPU and GPU load at max capacity. In fact, Geekbench users might notice that a higher score will always reflect better user experiences. For example, videos rendered in Final Cut Pro for me have actually been taking a really long time. It's been slowing down my computer as well. Now, Apple did advertise the MacBook Pro lineup to creators making 4K videos, but it seems like 4K video functionality, at least editing wise, is actually really struggling. When we take a look at storage space, the only place I can really see a difference is in the mail app. There's actually a lot less space used and everything seems to load just a little bit faster. But when you look at any other apps or you're doing any other vigorous tasks with macOS High Sierra, you actually aren't getting any better performance. The performance seems to be the same and overall, the user experience seems to be exactly like macOS Sierra. But one thing isn't the same. I run a temperature gauge program on my computer that records temperatures while my system is running. While using macOS High Sierra, my temps have actually risen an average of five to 10 degrees Celsius. While that might not be a big deal on a desktop machine, it most definitely is on a laptop. This temperature spike is actually putting my CPU core temps into the high 80s and low 90s. This is really scary because max temps for the CPU I'm running is 100 degrees. Back to the noticeable differences. If you were to give me two Macs running both Mac OS Sierra and High Sierra, either than the difference in branding for Siri, I probably couldn't tell much of a difference between the two operating systems. Honestly, right now Mac OS High Sierra hasn't slowed down my computer, but it hasn't sped up my computer as Apple claims it should. I'm really disappointed in Apple on this one and I really hope that more features will come in some upcoming beta versions. I would really like to know what your thoughts are on Apple's new OS. Please tell me what you think in the comment section down below. If you'd like to see some more content on beta updates for iOS, macOS, and watchOS, please click that subscribe button. It's always appreciated. Thank you guys so much for watching. 
I hope to see you in my next video, but until then, I hope you all have an awesome day.